We've been talking a lot about how to govern blockchains, but this is a whole new world of how we govern ourselves if we have our own independent currencies. A burgeoning DAO landscape. Case studies in decentralized governance. Decentralized autonomous organizations are leading the charge for blockchain innovation. The question is, how do we adapt traditional systems for today's evolving landscape? Grace Rachmani, DAOleadership.com. So I'm going to talk about what's actually happening. You've heard a lot of people talking about what they'd like to do, experiments, ideas. What's, what's really happening today in the DAO landscape? Uh, I'm Grace. I've done a lot of research in this area. I help organizations. I don't have a timer here. Um, I thought there was going to be like a timer. Anyway, I don't, they help organizations. I help organizations actually implement these things. So what is being implemented? And the reason we're talking about governance is because we've created these new forms of money, which don't need a government. And if your government isn't printing money, how are they going to pay salaries? And how, if they can't pay salaries, how are we going to govern ourselves? These are the really interesting questions. And we've been talking a lot about how to govern blockchains, but this is a whole new world of how we govern ourselves if we have our own independent currencies. So the first thing is, what's governance? What is governance? And you'll notice that the voting part is in red here, because we keep thinking that voting is democracy. Like, if we create voting systems, it'll be fair. And um, I don't like to say the word Brexit because it gets people excited, but what choices did you get? It was like bad choice A or bad choice B. And if when you go to the ballot, all you've got is a list of bad choices, and I know we've all had that experience. Voting isn't really democracy. It's all this stuff around it. What were we talking about? What was the problem in the first place? Who made the problem definition? In the, and then what are some variable proposals? How do we come up with good proposals? Like, wouldn't it be nice, thank you, um, to have to go to the voting ballot and be like, oh, wow, all these choices are OK, and this is the best one. And so the technology has always, the technology is done by technologists, and they focus on voting because for them, that's the only participation in democracy they had until now. So that's what democracy is. And they understand yes and no. You know, we're technologists, so we can build that. And that's, but that's not what democracy is. So, the, so the second definition is, what's a DAO? What's a decentralized autonomous organization? So these are organizations. One is a centralized organization, and we know what that, that's the Pope. It's centralized, there's one top, there's one. And then there's this, uh, this DAO, which is, um, there's a lot of people there. Nobody's the boss of each other. These are Jews. And they all follow a protocol that says you need a hat but they're all forked, they're different hats. They have 613 laws and numerous books that explain the protocol to one another. And they, this is a DAO. And it's so powerful that you can't get rid of it for some reason, even though people have tried. And it built its own country, but there's nobody to sue. It's like, there's no legal entity. And so when we're starting to think about what is a DAO, what are we governing? This is likely to be the more future. And we can see that already. Like, we have multiple associations, right? I'm a citizen of the world. Maybe I have dual citizenship. Or I associate with you know, these kinds of political ideas. I associate with skiers because I love skiing, or whatever it is. We have multiple associations, and it's quite fluid. And that's more likely what we're going to be governing in the future and how we're going to be thinking about what we want to govern. So I know that people have already talked to you about DAO tech, so I'm just going to go through this quickly. But basically, we have voting and dispute resolution. And voting and dispute resolution assume that we disagree, that we weren't able to come to a consensus. And we're just going to have to go with majority rules, and then we're going to have to dispute resolution when people disagree. And that's not ideal, because we're dealing with a world where you can't fork. And again, if I go back to, um, if I go back to Brexit, you're British whether you like it or not. And you could even leave the country, but your family is still there. So majority rules isn't always ideal. 
we actually want solutions where we could find an ideal solution for the maximum number of people. So this is where um, you know, we're seeing Dow Tech, what works and what doesn't work. And what's working is fairly simple yes-no solutions. Um, you want to take a look at that. Um, if you're interested in more deep research, that's the URL. I've interviewed about 30 or 40 different DAO organizations, and you'll find that in depth here. And what's working is yes-no solutions. We have a decentralized exchange here. We have a stable coin. We have a, a, a company that pays salaries. We have an a, a insurance agent. We have some investing companies. And it's like, yes or no, should we invest in this? Should we list this? Should we pay this? It's working. What's not working is more complex uh, situations. CuraDAO, we're trying to make our country better in Curacao. We're trying to figure out how to allocate our marketing budget in the case of Kyber. Uh, Genesis DAO, we're trying to promote this technology all over the world. And these are complex questions, complex decisions. And the DAO technology is really inadequate for how do we collaborate as a community. And so these aren't working as well. And the reasons they're not working are these ones. Now, the reason I'm putting this up and going through it is we know that this technology has a lot of future. And if you're an investor or a developer and you're like, what should I develop? These are the problems we're facing. Reputation without identity. So many of these solutions have reputation built in. So I know somebody is a heavier voter or a lighter voter, but I'm not sure of their real identity because they're using MetaMask or some other pseudonymous thing. Community without cultural norms. So it's like join our community and be become part of the DAO. But there's no onboarding process to have people move from this adversarial relationship to a more collaborative way of talking to one another. In fact, there are no cultural norms. Should we show up on time for meetings, not on time for, how does it work? So this is, and we have cultural norms that have already been built into us by Facebook and all these competitive kind of things. So we're in a competitive society, but we're not making the transition in, in, a, in a way that would work. Proposals without problem definition. So all of these technologies are, you make a proposal and then it gets voted on. But nobody ever defined, what's the problem? What would an optimal solution look like? Let's have five proposals and vote on the best one instead of just say yes or no in a chronological order. So I think proposal making is one of the areas where, we're gonna, where it's the most painful, like I said. Coming to a ballot where the proposals are all bad or just saying yes, no, and not knowing if next week somebody will have something better, it's, it's a very limited situation. And again, winner take all, if you put a proposal into these solutions, you either get approved for the budget or you don't. So it's a very competitive environment by nature. And so again, we get these DAOs that are talking about collaboration, but very quickly they devolve into this kind of competition because winner takes all. And then finally, one way for all decisions. It's not a natural way in an organization to have one way for all decisions. Some decisions are like, you know what? You got an idea, go for it. Some are, hey, if you can gather the money, go for it. Some are, let's have a competition and see who's the best. And some are, let's get everybody in the room and talk about it. So all, you need platforms that allocate different kinds of decision making for different kinds of decisions. So these are the technologies I expect that we're going to be adding to these DAO platforms over the next year or two. For me, like I said, what's most interesting is how do we deal with no fork situations. And what I mean, like I said, is you're a citizen of where you're a citizen of. And even moving yourself doesn't really help you. So how do we make better decisions? We breathe the air, so pollution is a problem for all of us, and we can't fork to Mars yet. Um, if we want interoperability standards within the blockchain, you can't fork an interoperability standard. So this is where I see the most potential for DAO. This is where we're falling short the most. Um, and so that's really what there is in the industry today, uh, where I see the potential and where I see the failures and the successes. That's me. Thank you. Thank you.